What up, nerds? I'm Clay from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and on the ACT, and I'm a National Merit Finalist. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how your PSAT score affects National Merit Scholarships. So let's start in the beginning. First of all, what is the PSAT? The PSAT is the Preliminary SAT. It's the Preliminary Scholastic Aptitude Test. It's a test that you'll take in the fall of your junior year if you want to. Not everybody takes the PSAT. Not everybody has to take it. You should definitely take it though. Why? Because if you do well on the PSAT, you could qualify for a National Merit Scholarship. What is a National Merit Scholarship? Well, the National Merit Scholarship is a scholarship that you can win if you're in the top 1% of PSAT test takers in the country. More specifically, within your state, if you score in the 99th percentile, that is to say, if you score higher than 99% of your peers, then you can qualify to be a National Merit Scholar. Now, that's not all you need. PSAT score doesn't take you all the way to be a National Merit Finalist. There's more to it than that. You have to complete an application process as well. But the first step is to score in the 99th percentile on the PSAT. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, let's talk about what it means to be a National Merit Finalist. Being a National Merit Finalist entitles you to a scholarship for National Merit itself, but that amount is very small. The actual scholarship that you'll get for being a National Merit Finalist, for, that you'll get directly for being a National Merit Finalist, is very small. That's not a big deal. The bigger deal by far is that there are lots and lots of colleges that will give you a very generous scholarship if you are a National Merit Finalist. Pretty much no questions asked. It's not quite no questions asked, but just about. For instance, I got a full scholarship to my undergrad college because I was a National Merit Finalist. I went to Arizona State University and I had a full academic scholarship pretty much just because I was a National Merit Finalist. So imagine that, getting a full ride to college just for doing well on the PSAT, essentially. That's a big deal. So obviously, we want to know how the process works, right? Again, the first step in the process is to score in the 99th percentile on the PSAT. Now, what does that mean? How does that determine? Well, it goes on a state-by-state state basis. The idea is to make it more fair by only comparing you to the other people within your state who take the PSAT. Let me explain what I mean. When I took it, I was in Tennessee, right? So in order to become a National Merit Finalist, I had to score better than 99% of my peers in Tennessee. In other words, I had to score in the top percentile or in the 99th percentile of PSAT test takers in Tennessee. If you're in a different state, you'll be compared to your own state. Some states are more competitive than others. For instance, California is really competitive. New Jersey is really competitive. Some other states are less competitive. So the score that you need to attain on the PSAT in order to be in the top percentile will vary depending on which state you're in. But regardless of which state you're in, you should aim for that top percentile. If you can get into it, you've got a really good chance of becoming a National Merit Finalist. Now, again, there is more to the process of becoming a finalist than doing well on the PSAT. But the reality is the vast majority of students who score in the 99th percentile end up becoming finalists. So once you score in the 99th percentile on the PSAT for your state, you'll be named what's called a National Merit Semifinalist. A semifinalist means you're almost a finalist, you just have to do the last part. That last part involves applying, and it takes like a year actually to find out if you're going to be a National Merit Finalist. But once you apply, you as you apply, you get a letter from your principal or headmaster, somebody from your school. You have to fill out an application that's kind of like a college application. It involves sending in your high school transcripts, etc. Essentially, the idea is to make sure that your score in the test wasn't a complete fluke or wasn't uh, not reflective of your actual ability. But once you have completed the application process, about 95% of semifinalists become finalists. So again, once you have become a semifinalist, you've got a really good chance of becoming a finalist. All you have to do is complete the application process and the vast majority of semifinalists will become finalists. So the key then is obviously to do well on the PSAT, well enough to become a semifinalist. So how do we do well on the PSAT? Well, we'll have other videos that explain that in more detail, but step number one is make sure that you take the PSAT. 
Not everybody gets signed up automatically to take the PSAT. So you've got to make sure that for yourself, you are signed up to take it. It should always be an option for every American high school student to take it, but you may have to make sure that it actually happens for you. It may not be that you're automatically registered for it at your school. So make sure that you do in fact get signed up to take it. Make sure that you prepare for it as well. You absolutely can prepare for the PSAT, just like you can for the SAT or the ACT. If you show up prepared and ready to take it, that's gonna greatly increase your chances of scoring highly enough to become a National Merit semifinalist. So if you get signed up to take the PSAT and you show up prepared to take it, you're likely to do much better on it than you otherwise would. You might even score high enough to be in that top percentile. Once you become a National Merit semifinalist, you'll receive further instructions about how to go through the application process from there. As I mentioned earlier, it actually takes a really long time, like up to a year, to go from taking the PSAT to being named a National Merit finalist. But if you get the score you need, you'll enable yourself to do that. So in summary, guys, if you want to be a National Merit finalist, it all starts with your PSAT score. You cannot become a National Merit finalist without first scoring in the top percentile for your state on the PSAT. So it's really important that you get signed up for the PSAT. It's really important that you get prepared for the PSAT and that you show up ready to take it. So hopefully that helped you understand how your PSAT score affects becoming a National Merit finalist. Please don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Expert's YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love it if you'd leave us a comment below this video and let us know what you'd like to hear about in our next video. What do you want advice on from a two-time perfect scorer and national merit finalist? Leave me a comment below this and your comment may be the topic of the next video. There's also a discount code in the description below this video, which you can use for exclusive discounts on all of our products at our website, www.prepexpert.com. You can sign up for an SAT or ACT course with me or one of our other instructors, or you can sign up for tutoring if you'd prefer that. So until next time, guys, keep working hard.